Well, welcome, Curtis Bennett. Listen, really important for you guys uh, to understand what this is. I would typically never be at a meeting like this ever. Uh, we do the most advanced uh, troubleshooting in the world for all industry. We've worked for every oil company, military, police. Uh, we work for medicine. We work for medical education. I'm just a guy that put together a, a combination of education experience that allowed me to direct this crew. So if you can imagine this, and I'm an unlikely looking character, but we actually consult for medical academia. We lecture this in medical education. Now the reason I'm here with this issue is, even for counselors, and especially today is alarming for me, because I received an email that was copied to the mayor in Salmon Arm, and, the mayor, and it was from a TELUS. And TELUS gave her a form letter when she was asking about how serious these technologies are. They gave her a form letter saying everything's safe, and everything is not safe. Now in order for me to show you guys that, you know, my work is, how many people have electricity in their homes? Okay, I can prove that my job works. How many people live in buildings? Okay, and you guys that are tradesmen, you guys know this to be true. I don't tell a plumber what to do. The plumber doesn't tell me what to do. I don't tell a carpenter what to do. I don't tell the cook what to do. I don't tell my mom what to do. My area of expertise is my area of expertise. When Barb said, the, Barb, the things that Barb was saying about me, you can imagine me about my horrible job. I've actually had to consult to potentially take a life and save a life in the same day. We consulted for the military after 9-11 on a vulnerability issue that they just couldn't see. That's how specialized our work is. Now a lot of people are going to say, I don't believe that guy. So that's why we're going to show you a little bit of a presentation, but I want to do this fast because we're going to let you guys see beyond your visible spectrum. I'm a journeyman electrician with national credentials. The BC government provided my credentials. The national government, Mr. Harper's office, provided my credentials. On top of that, I'm a building engineering technologist. I've got a 33-year background in infrared. We do the most advanced temperature imaging in the world, where imagine this, the entire world's academia is blind to temperature. So that's why we do the work we do. We work for governments. We don't sell anything. We don't lobby an opinion. If I would have known that when people's power was out, I'd just tell them, hey, you're in real serious trouble. Give me some 10 grand up front and we'll fix your power for you. We don't do that. So I want to show you guys what we do because here's where we live, all of us. Now you can see this. We might have geographically defined borders. We are in this together. When these guys are talking about this smart grid, do you know what they want to do? They want to smother the planet in frequencies. And I can tell you as an electrical professional, do you know what we don't do? We do not blast out frequencies. We are not electrically compatible. So I'm going to show you a little bit first here as we bounce along. Here's just an example of this. Anybody ever had cold spots in their house? Here's what missing insulation looks like. Just this one stud space right here. And believe it or not, that makes the building actually not comply with building code. Not use energy the way it's supposed to. And here's something interesting for you too. The smart grid is supposed to save you energy. Is that correct? Those blind ass bastards can't see this. So they're not talking about saving you energy. It really makes me mad that they're talking like that because here I am an electrical professional and guess what we do? We design the electrical systems that go into your buildings. And these guys are using deceptive language and not telling you the truth. And remember this, I'm not a lobbyist of any kind whatsoever. Uh, we work for, uh, for the reasons we particularly do. Now next slide, Brian. I wanna show you the guys this quickly. Here's an example of what we've done in working for Syncrude, Suncor, Shell, Esso, Lumber Mills, energy companies, Hydro, every energy company, all the above. Here's an electrical uh, fuse box right here. What we do is we actually work for industry and their insurers at the same time to pinpoint problems before they kill people. And so guess what? They get to keep their production going. Nobody gets hurt. They get lower in premiums. It's just that analytical. We don't go and tell them what to do. We isolate the problems for their professionals. Next slide. How many people are familiar with forest fires? Well, you guys imagine this is one of the most horrible things that I've ever had to go through in my life. We trained our first fire department 20 years ago, and that's to let these guys see through smoke. We want them to get at these fires faster. In 2003, I was working in Kelowna on energy issues, 
and guess what? That fire broke out uh, on Pe in Peachland. They said, we can't see the fire, we can't fight it, we can't do anything. I phoned the government, Gordon Campbell's office, and I said, let us help you with that fire. And he said, oh, you're the guy that can see through the s smoke. And that's it. These guys laughed in the background, and all we did is we just watched, and we said, this thing's coming to Kelowna. We mapped the fire. I phoned them, and I harassed them, and I said, let us help you with this fire. We, they can't see it. You can't fight it. And so guess what? As soon as it hit Kelowna, all of a sudden it changed jurisdiction. We contacted Kelowna, and they said, leave us alone. Well, they've changed jurisdictions. Well, here's an example. They fought the fires blind for $7 million a day. Here's Kettle Valley on August 21st, one of the worst days of my life, where here we are just mapping this fire, just gathering this information with students. And as soon as I saw this fire coming in the background, here's what's going on behind the smoke. And this fire is coming 300 feet a minute. I actually flagged down an RCMP officer and I said, you got to evacuate now. You got to get these people out of here because everybody's waiting for an order. Well, guess what? That initiated the evacuation of 15,000 that day. But that's how serious our job is. We don't tell these guys how to do this, but the idea that we told them, you can track this fire through the smoke. You can track the direction of it. So now, you know what breaks my heart? Gordon Campbell, they had a public inquiry. Do you remember that? We presented this for the public inquiry in Gordon Campbell's office. You taping this? Gordon Campbell's office specifically edited this out of the fire inquiry. They said it was based on an audio only. We're not accepting your images. And the reason why, on August 22nd, when the fire interfaced with Kelowna, we were imaging the fire through the smoke across the lake and Gordon Campbell's entourage showed up. They all looked through the camera and said, what's that? And they said, that's Kelowna burning. That's those 200 homes burning. We embarrassed the premier's office. So that guy, Gordon Campbell, edited the fire inquiry. Now when Colorado's burning, you guys heard that? Guess what? Blind as hell. RCMP couldn't see crap. Firefighters couldn't see crap. Never mind the house is burning. Do you know that all God's creatures couldn't outrun that fire? You guys imagine the devastation trying to fight those fires blind. Next slide, please. How many people have heard of groundwater? I didn't even know what it was. When they came to us and said, groundwater is nature's hidden treasure. Can you see it? And I said, what's the big deal? They said, that's where fish spawn. And I said, hey, is that ever cool? And I said, tell me some temperature information. Here's what groundwater looks like. Here's the digital image. Here's groundwater in the wintertime. And it also explained to me why I could never catch a fish. And I was always on the wrong side of the river. And, and as a result of this, and here's another example. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans uses our work for their standards and requests for proposals. It's just to get the job done, for municipalities to get the job done. This one here, how many heard of, people heard of the SARS virus? Well, the infrared industry imaged hundreds of millions of people at ports of entry and could not produce one image of a flu. And the reason they couldn't is the infrared imaging application exceeded their expertise. You just can't pick up a piece of this technology and go out and start shooting things. But here's what a flu looks like. She's got a sinus infection on one side of her face. And you imagine this with medicine. Medicine is blind to temperature. How many people have heard of inflammation? You should see what it looks like. How many people have heard of a stroke? You should see what it looks like. And I'm going to show you. Next image. This woman is a WCB claim. She hurt her wrist. Inflammation is elevated temperature. Can you see her injured wrist? It's that simple. And us doing this for medicine, even medicine doesn't like me because they said, you're going to hold us accountable. And I said, if you can see it, you can fix it. There shouldn't be any problem with that. But she's hurt, and you've got to help her. Next image, please. This guy's got diabetic neuropathy, and this foot is dying. This cold spot right here is the center of his dying. And guess what medicine's going to do with that? Treat his symptoms until they start chopping off feet. That's what they do. Treat symptoms until they chop off toes. Now I'm going to show you something at the end of this. When I lectured in this in medicine, they said, you're mad at us. And I said, you drive me crazy. I said, you're treating symptoms. And they said, yes, don't you treat symptoms? They said, we'd sure love to do that electrically, but we can't. You know, people keep getting electrocuted and it just hurts. So we don't do that. So we actually did some work to increase circulation in feet and save their feet. Even yesterday in Cologne, I ran into a guy and he said, 
my leg was black and blue from here down, and he said, you help me, and he said, look at the colors back. And guess what, it cost him nothing. Next image, please. Here's a young lady who's had a stroke. They put her in a hospital for a month, did all kinds of rehab, finally did an MRI, and there are two blockages in her face right here. Um, imagine this, the cost, and again, I'm talking nicely here. The cost related to this, a month in a hospital, all the work that went into it. Um, she called me and she said, could you see it? And I said, yes. And guess what? This is one minute. One minute non-invasive imaging where an x-ray just would have missed it. Next image, please. Anybody heard of rheumatoid arthritis? Here's the inflammation wrapped around the knees. And just so you can see it, and that's the most important part. When they, my objective is with this, with medicine, and here's why we're teaching this. They can see it, they can fix it. There's no reason they can't. We don't care what they use. Fix it. Next image. This is progressive infection. This is a, a spider bite. Got bit by a, a brown recluse spider. Here's the progression of infection in 24 hours. And see, that's looking pretty ugly, isn't it? And that's my hand. So I got bit by that spider and they said, you're even trying to image your hand? I said, before they take it off, we gotta hurry. Because guess what, uh, it's a very, and the whole idea with this is, guess what? With medicine, we're showing the progression of infection, the progression of effective treatment. Never mind this, I hope so stuff. Next image. How many people heard of breast cancer? Here's where a 50 clinic group tried to image breast cancer. They took this woman's breast images her mother died from breast cancer, her sister had her breast removed. She said, they said, I am slightly asymmetrical, not a big deal, we use it for a baseline. And I said, I disagree with all 50 clinics. I want you to change the temperature span and send it back to me. Now, do you see the differences in the breasts? She's got a tumor right above her areola right here that they removed. And guess what, a doctor would have missed that. And we say that with great respect. You know, these guys are expected to do a big job in a short period of time. But most important with you guys, I'm showing you the seriousness of our work. And when I'm talking about what I'm talking to you about today and how serious and dangerous these frequencies are, I'm telling you this for your life. Next slide. Now, you guys, here's what just makes me crazy too, because how many people heard about those power outages down east? Four million people out of power, heat waves going crazy. Do you know when they talk about climate change, the first time I heard about climate change, they said, do you believe that? And I said, no, you'd think climate's changing all the time anyways. I said, what's the big deal? And they said, we don't want man-made development or anything to heat the atmosphere because weather is basic interaction of cold and warm air and water vapor. So we imaged buildings in seven provinces in 26 states and found out that, you know when it was uh, 30 degrees down east? Their buildings were 90. The buildings aren't designed for 90. So guess what? These things aren't insulated for it, so the heat travels back inside the building where they're using air conditioning. How many people have heard of air conditioning? Do you know what air conditioning is? Refrigeration. It's the same thing as opening your fridge door or going and standing inside a cooler. They didn't understand that the buildings got problems. We just couldn't see it. And what we did is this. Here's a building, brown paint, exterior paint, piece of styrofoam in between white paint. Here it is right here. That much hotter. This is uh, 66 degrees Celsius. It's designed by building code to be a maximum of 33. Look at what it does on the inside of the building. Here's where the styrofoam is. Do you see the heated lumber? Do you know what it takes to heat lumber all the way through a wall like that? It doesn't uh, transfer heat very well. It takes a lot to impose that load on there and it's causing a big energy demand. Next slide. This is air conditioning, cold, heavy air laying on the floor, right here. This air conditioner is using 3,000 watts per hour of energy to react to a symptom of the exterior being radiated. Do you think BC Hydro's smart grid caught this? They're going to charge you for peak hours while you react to the symptoms. Instead of when we went to Mr. Campbell and said, building exteriors need to be shaded or painted properly or protected. Mr. Campbell edited that out of the inquiry too. So guess what? This grid's not going to catch this problem here. And even this, and guess what? The wireless community got knocked off the smart grid uh, down east too. Next slide. Here's what to show you this. Buildings are supposed to reflect or protect from solar radiation. For you tradesmen and people out there, there's a big 
million, billion dollar economy in whitewashing buildings, functional landscaping. Here's a development before sunrise. Can you guys see this thing? It's functioning with the atmosphere. It's doing pretty good, isn't it? This is in the morning, right away, right after sunrise. It is so aggressive and so fast, the same, radi same solar radiation, a frequency. Next slide, please. Now, when people talk about frequency interactions and the fact that it can't hurt you, it can't do things, that's just absolute nonsense. And here's an example. This is, a, this is part of an inspection for Tolco Industries. When we went in here, we looked in here, there's no switches, no, no anything. There's just single conductors coming through here. And I said, I want you to pull the cabinet off. They said, there's nothing in there. I said, pull it off. They pulled it off. Do you know what's going on right here with these single conductors? That's 60 hertz electricity. So because it's single conductors, the metal cabinet is trying to change direction 180 degrees at twice the frequency, 120 times per second. It can't do that because it's metal, so it's generating heat that's going to exceed the, conductor, the conductor's insulation, and this would blow up and cause catastrophic failure, kill people, kill the people in the mill, uh, uh, light the place up, burn it, all the above, but the idea that this, this is electricity. It's not rocket science, it's electricity. It's not to be disputed. Next one. Now when it comes to safety code six, here's the thing for me. Medical education and the government sent me when people were saying this Wi-Fi is hurting our children. I said, what the heck is Wi-Fi? And they said, oh, they're putting this stuff in schools uh, uh, so they can talk to computers. I said, you can't do that. I said, you can't blast frequencies around a room. I said, why the heck would they do such a thing? You have to wire things. That's why we wire things. Inside the wires in buildings, the lines of magnetic, electromagnetic flux actually cancel each other out to keep us safe. So what happened is I dug into this through Barb's help and everything else, and guess what? And I wasn't as nice as Barb said. I'm not even that nice at all. I didn't believe her for one second. I said, you're going to have to prove it to me, and the whole time, I'm just watching her like you can't even imagine, but she can't see what I see, but I'm going to show you this. So here's what I did. September 14th of 2010, this is how corrupt, and I should say corrupt, there's some dirty politics, whatever, but it denied these administrators this information. September 14th, 2010, I wrote a letter to Health Canada because I read this code. Now you imagine this, how many people have ever worked with a code before? Plumbing code, building code, electrical code, anybody? Well, you imagine this. This code says this. The predominant, here's the whole code. The predominant health effect to be avoided is the unintentional stimulation of tissue. Intentional stimulation of tissue is when you go to the doctor's office and your doctor says, okay, sit in the chair, we're going to cover you up. We're going to protect you with this clothing. Take a deep breath. Shh, we take the x-ray. Nobody can go into a doctor's office and say, I don't want the clothing, doc. Just give it to me. Because if you did that, one, you're going to seriously hurt, and the liabilities would be off the charts. You cannot do it. The only time you can stimulate tissue is in that doctor's office in a controlled environment. Now, when it came to Wi-Fi and these other frequencies, smart meters, even people with cell phones, you guys think about this. The code said this. Imagine, you guys imagine this, a code that says, we don't understand the mechanism linking the frequencies to adverse health effects because they didn't understand how the frequencies were actually hitting people. How could they hit somebody? Where could they hit somebody? Because in order to hurt you or do anything, they have to hit you. So I'm gonna show you this too, but imagine this. This code also says this. Even though we don't know what's causing this, as soon as we find out and we prove this with peer-reviewed data, we will change the code if deemed necessary. That was September 14th. October, I got a letter from Health Canada saying, thank you very much for your interest in the safety code. We do the lowest standards and blah, 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 blah. End of October, at the request of Canadian, standing, uh, committees, uh, Canadian Parliament Standing Committee on Health, uh, I was uh, requested to provide expert witness for the committee and I said, guys, this code, you know what they left out, what Barb was talking about? It's a code related to frequencies. What they did is they left out the routers, smart meter routers. They left them out of the equation. 
they said, oh, the smart meters are going to go here, but if you step this far back from the smart meter, you're going to be safe. They left out the routers and the pole, blasting the whole entire neighborhood. With Wi-Fi in schools, you imagine this. Those kids are sitting in a classroom. They are smothering the classroom with this router to talk to 30 computers, and the children are caught in the circuit. Do you know what else they left out of the equation? People were not considered electrical at all. You were considered a hunk of tissue that was being heated by the kilogram. The faster the radiation, they determined that somebody my size can take so many watts per kilogram. Can you imagine such ridiculous science? As soon as I said to them, what did you do with the frequencies associated with human biology, a biological system? There must be millions of them when you think of what a body does. You know what I got from Industry Canada? They're not electrical. This is no kidding. So guess what? And I, and I informed them then, as somebody that works for an insurance company, saying, guys, the dangers of these technologies is going to be lectured in medical education January 11th, January of 2011. January of 2011. Now guess what? That changed medical education. Once it was proven, it was provided to medical education. Doctors get education credits they need for licensing. It's no longer opinion. It is accepted education. If you're a teacher, you need CE credits just to keep teaching. If you're a lawyer, you need continuing education credits to just keep practicing law. That's the importance of it. So here's this code. Now, Health Canada, don't care why. Don't care why, that's not my business. They're going to go to jail for it, whoever did it. They did not pass on this information as they were supposed to. And some people from the province didn't do the same thing as well. That guess what? The application of law changed. The frequencies are illegal. Now even yes, like I say yesterday, these guys were, were so disrespectful to Nancy Cooper when she said in, at a salmon arm, what are we missing in safety code six? Is there something going on? Here is the form letter. They denied her the information that guess what? If you're stimulating tissue, which you can't do, it's actually a condition of the license that, they're, that they comply with safety code six. Thou shalt not stimulate tissue. Next slide, please. You guys, do you know what they use to, uh, to determine the safety of these frequencies? Here he is. Here he is. This is, this is no nonsense. This is him. See this right here? They fill him up with a liquid. And what this is, is this is a temperature probe right here. And they put this in the liquid. Do you see this right here? This is, and this is very serious science. This is where they put the cell phone and mount this to a bracket. It's the intended position of use, just like an x-ray. So what these guys did is they said, okay, Curtis, the strongest power density is right at the base of the antenna. We went from there straight into the side of the skull and it's hitting just a small couple of centimeters right here in a localized area, and that's it. And I said, that is one radiation device. I said, you have two or three towers talking to the cell phone, hitting them from head to toe. What did you do with the towers? And they said, we didn't consider them. So imagine this. They left out the towers that are hitting you with the frequencies from head to toe. So when these guys and the citizens from Safe Technology and the wireless and the Wi-Fi guys went and said, our kids are getting sick, they've got all these different symptoms, everybody just laugh, laughed them off because they said, hey, when the kids are in school, the computer is not against their head. And guess what? They said, the power density is really low, the wattage is really low, so if you step back from the computer, you'll be safe. What they didn't talk about is the kids being caught in the circuit. Now, when these frequencies interact with tissue, and I want you guys, how many guys have got their cell phones in their pockets right now, especially the guys? That's good. How many more? Hands high. I'd be one of those guys. Guess what? Doctors said to me the same thing when I had to lecture this in medicine, and military showed up, everybody showed up, and they said, Curtis, the power density is low, the wattage is low, and I said, what's the frequency of your cell phone? They said, 900 megahertz. I said, that's 900 million cycles a second. That means those towers are radiating your testicles and your testicles at a molecular level are flipping direction 1.8 billion times a second. 1.8 billion times a second. Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz, 
those children at a molecular level, those girls are getting their ovaries mutated 4.8 billion times a second, 10 billion times a second. Now I want you guys to go home, take your car, and just shake it 180 degrees billions of times a second and just see how long that car lasts. It's going to come apart. It's going to produce heat. They left that out with this code that says, we're missing this mechanism, but the mechanism was reported. Okay, next slide, please. Here's cell phone radiation. I did this 10 years ago with medicine. Here's a guy before cell phone use. Here he is one hour after cell phone use. Can you guys see that one side of his head and his neck and everything else? That's why a doctor said to me 10 years ago, they said, do you have a cell phone? I said, I got enough problems. I said, without uh, radiating, they said, Curtis, the cell phone's safe. And I said, guys, you're leaving out the towers. You're leaving out this stuff and it's hitting you and it's hurting you. And you imagine this, safety code six says this too. We know we're electromagnetically inducing you, but just a little bit, you hunks and kilograms of meat. That's it. We're heating up your tissue. That's it. Now imagine this for you guys. Anybody know anybody with a pacemaker? Anybody have a pacemaker? Anybody going to have a pacemaker in time? Well, you guys imagine this, realistically. This is electromagnetically inducing pacemakers. And a gentleman just did an interview with this where he said the smart meters, they turned on the smart meter in his home. The, the frequencies came on. His pacemaker kicked in to save his life until the smart meter frequency shut off his pacemaker. Now you imagine this. Do you know who puts in pacemakers? Interior health. Interior health. Now this is how just ridiculous this is. Interior health puts in the pacemakers. You know what the manufacturer's specs say? Stay out of an electromagnetic field. Do you know what BC Hydro's doing? They're going to smother you in it. They're, listen, here, here's the thing for me in medicine. They said, what's the bottom line? I said, extinction. Extinction. They said, is this going to hurt people? I said, it's going to kill your parents. It's going to kill vulnerable people. You can't fluff this up. You know, we tell people electrically, don't touch that stuff. How many people say, oh yeah, Curtis, I'll just climb over that fence and just hang on to that stuff anyways. Ain't going to happen. So you guys remember this. Now imagine this. Anybody hear this? SIDS rates were up 30% in 2011 over 2010 in BC. And the coroner's office is investigating. And medicine came to me and they said, could those babies be electromagnetically induced? And I said, yes. And I said, tell me that vulnerable babies' nerves can't be affected. And they said, of course they could. So you get a vulnerable baby, you get something else, you're, you're, you're in trouble. And it's killing the babies. You know when in schools, do you know how we generate electricity? As an example, we wave a conductor through an electromagnetic field. That's how we generate electricity. Do you know what's happening in schools? Wi-Fi is providing the electromagnetic field. Your children are the conductors. Except, guess what? They already have their own electricity. And Joan's around here someplace, too, and Joan is a biology, a, a taught biology, and just very briefly talked about what would happen if you change the voltage in a cell just by a little bit. And imagine this for medicine. You're going to your doctor where these poor guys look at you and go, I can't see anything. I don't know what's going on. I got 15 minutes to diagnose you. Do you know what I'm lecturing in medicine right now? And imagine this for me, shocks the hell out of me that I'd ever have to talk like this. I lecture in medicine now. You have to consider their electromagnetic environment and diagnosis or you are misdiagnosing them. You have to think about where is that cell phone attached to this? Because when I image guys and say, Curtis, I got a groin problem. I said, where's your cell phone, dude? Young men with testicular cancer, IT guys, 25 years old. Now, when Barb talked about these frequencies were reported as a, a, a possible carcinogen, if Health Canada would have done their job and reported to the World Health Organization, it would have been called a group one carcinogenic. It is gonna cause cancer. We are not compatible. Do you know that this stuff kills trees? Do you know these frequencies kill trees? We are not compatible electrically. And imagine this for me, consulting on a groundwater issue. If the BC government or any government smothers the province in those frequencies, do you know what it's going to do? It's going to knock the foliage off the trees, expose the ground to solar radiation, and it will kill fish spawning, 
kill fish spawning, kill eagles, kill bears, kill everything. This is how serious this is. Now, just to, and here, imagine this for me as well. And this is why you guys have to get active with this, for real. These are your homes. When I go to BC Hydro and say, those frequencies are hitting buildings. We, we consulted for structural engineers on a $200 million building in Kelowna. And as soon as he said, they're going to put smart meters on this building, I said, if they put smart meters on your building, you're going to vibrate that building at a molecular level. You are going to ruin the structural integrity of the building and fire separations. What would happen if you took a piece of drywall and flipped it billions of times a second? You got firefighters going in there to do their job, and guess what? They don't know that that protection's not there. And that's why with municipalities, when we report this to that authority, we expect them to pass it on to you guys, because how the heck are you supposed to do your job otherwise? You know, again, here we are with structural engineers. We don't tell them about structural things. We report within our capacity. This is that, uh, like I say, this young man with the cell phone radiation. Is the next slide. Now, here is, here is Barb. Now, again, you can imagine when Barb came to me. And here's a sad, here's a sadder part. Barb was just ridiculed. She was ridiculed because, oh, Barb, you're not sick. You're a psycho. Barb, there's something the matter with you. And imagine this for Barb. When that doctor x-rays you in that office, you're stationary. There's Barb in that building selling cell phones strapped around her neck, next to her breasts, on her head while they're hooking up. She's moving. The frequencies are hitting her at different angles and causing unrealized damage to every parts of her body. This is the other side of Barb's head. The other side. She held her cell phone to this side of her head most of the time, but guess what? How many people can answer their cell phone inside their building? It's going through walls, it's going through roofs, it's going through your head. It's going through all of you. This should not be here. This seriously concerns me to see this kind of a pattern on Barb's head. And again, to look at her and while she's telling me a story, listen, I meant it when I said I wasn't nice. You know, we just cannot tell a lie for all reasons in the world. Next slide, please. Here's Barb when I said, tell me a story. I made Barb lay on the floor and stretch her arms out. And I said, tell me a story. Her hand should be symmetrical. Barb said, here's my cell phone hand right here. It feels like it's burning. But they said they can't see the burns on the outside, so it's okay. Well, it's burning you through and through, through your tissue, through all of you. Look at this pattern right here. I got her to flip her hands over, and I said, where do you feel it? And she said, all the way up my forearm to here. And there's Barb on that phone, StarTech phone, doing this. Now, guess what? This is going to change Barb's claim where she's going to get her claim, and she's going to win it because the towers shouldn't have done that to her. As a matter of fact, those towers, guess what? Industry Canada is not going to provide them with a license if they don't comply with Safety Code 6. It's mandatory. And for councillors, guess what? They are not complying with Safety Code 6. And it absolutely breaks my heart to watch the municipalities, our mayors, our elected officials have TELUS, and these guys come in and say, do we have a choice in this? No. We're going to put this thing up and we want to radiate the crap out of everything because we got people with iPods, iPads, four telephones driving down the connector and we want people to be able to hook up all the time because think of the money that we can make. They're going to get into these privacy issues, but guess what? This grid is dangerous. Is Jerry Flynn here? Is he around? No? You, got to, you guys wait and see this letter from Jerry Flynn. Jerry Flynn worked for the military, the Canadian military, and guess what he did? Radio frequency specialist. And he talked about that grid crashing and causing just unrealized damage. And guess what? There's a letter here that they've got someplace where he's reported this to Stephen Harper as a national security issue. We reported this as a health and environmental emergency of unprecedented proportions. They put those frequencies in your areas. They're going to radiate your buildings. They're going to radiate your infrastructure. It's a fact of life. It's called electricity. There are reasons we wire things. Okay, and that's the most important part. Don't let those electricians fool you. They're a lot smarter than they look. There are reasons why we put things in wire. There are reasons why we construct things and get tradesmen to do their jobs, and that's to do it properly. It's not that, you know, these technologies don't need to be upgraded. Of course they do. But we want computer stations with those kids in school. We want them to go online with wires, protect them as it should be done, not kill them. 
not kill them. Uh, you guys, uh, I didn't bring them with me, but when doctors showed me this, they showed me uh, uh, pictures of eggs. No, 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 they showed me eggs that were radiated. Do you want me to tell you what the chicks looked like? Their legs were pointing in different directions. Their beaks were split. Their eyes were opened. Calves had legs growing this way, growing this way. They couldn't walk. This is causing, now you imagine this, right now we're in an Oregon court case with Wi-Fi in schools. I'm there in the court case saying, here's how the mechanism is hitting the children in school. Never mind just the power density issue. When they talk about power density, power is watts. It means you're in the circuit, that's it. I'm qualifying the mechanism. When I hear the biological effects, it pisses me off because here's Barry Trower who developed these weapons for the UK military. Do you know what? He's the one that says, genetic mutation of girls' ovaries. These little baby girls. When I'm lecturing this in medicine, do you know what I tell them? If they can reproduce, what are they going to reproduce? You know, we're in some real trouble. So when you're listening to this stuff here, I'm not talking conspiracy theory. I'm talking about greed and stupidity getting together at the same time. And why these guys did this, I don't know. But guess what? There's a reckoning coming because... There's big government jumping into this at higher levels, including uh, the policing arm of this, and people are going to go to jail for what they've done. You can't recklessly endanger people. That's the bottom line. If we did it as a professional, we did it as electricians, carpenters, plumbers, anybody, you're accountable. Next slide, please. I think this is the end of me. Now, you guys, here's my website. You guys, here's our website. I work for a big group, an international group. We're not selling anything. Okay, so take a look at some of this information. You guys get educated on this issue because here, imagine this. They don't want to just put a smart meter on your electrical meter. They want one on your gas meter. They want one on your water meter. They're making smart appliances inside your building so they can all talk to each other and do this wirelessly. And one of the reasons they're doing that is so they can monitor your consumption. Because guess what? That information and marketing information is big money. So you guys, you need to pay attention. How many people... Listen, my parents would argue this. How many people love their children? No, hands up. How many people would give their life for their child? Well, guess what? These guys are giving your counselors garbage language and not giving you the proper information to get this done. So you guys need to just step up, ask the appropriate questions. Don't fall for that uh, garbage language of, oh, it's a low power density. Uh, from an electrical perspective, that means, Curtis, this guy got killed working on a, a, something with lower wattage versus somebody working on something with a higher load. That's it. So you guys, please pay attention for your lives. Because at the end of this, you know what? We're in a lot of trouble. We're in a lot of trouble. Here's the other thing, too. Power and watts, they're not talking about this heating the atmosphere and changing weather. Canada's in a big crunch. Droughts, floods, fires all the above. We're moving too fast in these issues and you, you guys uh, just pay attention for your lives and for the lives of your children.